so hi everyone so today we would be looking at tensorflow decision forest library uh, i have been actually using this library for my internship project also uh, if you have uh, if you are connected with me on so social media like linkedin you must have seen uh, that i have actually just completed my internship and now i would be able to ac actually regularly upload videos on machine learning and tensorflow so this library is actually awesome i have used it uh, in my uh, actually project and both of the algorithms that is random forest and gradient boosted trees i have used and uh, while using them i actually worked something like that that i uh, used the whole, both the libraries got some data uh, got some output and i used ensemble learning to combine it with two other models that my fellow mate had made and after that we did the co level fusion and got the result so uh, this is how actually i did so let's start with this particular notebook so a disclaimer in the beginning that this particular notebook is not owned by me i have just made a copy of the notebook which is originally presented by a uh, tensorflow community and the owners are obviously google so i have used this notebook because uh, this notebook is the best example and uh, application of tensorflow decision forest and i would also recommend you to follow this notebook also and the reason i am using this only not any made by me because i just thought that uh, what's the use of actually using some different thing when i have to actually use the same features so i just wanted to uh, tell you that in the beginning so uh, let's start so in the beginning we would just install tensorflow and we would install brutalis so basically these both uh, libraries are must for this lab uh, we would be uh, using this uh, brutalis for displaying the detailed training logs in our notebook now uh, we would definitely be importing all the libraries that tensorflow decision library and this particular cell is used by uh, tensorflow to is used in the notebooks to actually uh, limit the output height of the of the cell and uh, let's see the tensorflow version so you can see it's uh, v0.2.7 so in this section we basically we would start with the uh, data set and then we would be actually converting into tf data set so the reason we would be doing that i would be telling you so let's first do this yeah so we have actually uh, taken the penguin data set uh, what uh, so in this you can see the species of the penguin the island the bill length and the body mass sex and year everything is displayed here now the data set contains a numerical category and uh, uh, numerical and categorical and missing features and the tensorflow decision library support all the features natively uh, therefore we don't need to pre process it every every time so labels are a bit different uh, so in keras they actually don't take that in uh, string they actually take that in integers so the so the uh, species which is stored as string uh, we would con we are converting that into uh, integer so now we would is, would be splitting the data set into two that is training and testing and just look at the number of example which are present so 236 examples for training and 108 example for testing that's awesome so now let's look at now we would be converting the uh, pandas data frame into tensorflow data set now you must be thinking why we are doing this why not directly take that pandas data frame into uh, the model the reason i am doing that is because the tensorflow decision library actually works on the tf data set format so that is the reason we are doing this so i would just convert it, convert this and yes it has been converted so now uh, what we would be doing we will be calling the tensorflow uh, the particular model so in tensorflow decision forest there are actually four models present for now i am using this random forest model and in the uh, in, in the uh, coming part of the video we would be looking at other models also so don't worry about that so this is the model that we have done and inside this we would be putting our training data i would simply do this and yeah it has been compiled now we would just evaluate so before doing that let's look at the written marks uh, so no we haven't specified any input features also all the columns are used for the feature extraction part and uh, in the model dot summary uh, if if we do that you, you can see that how the training has been done the accuracy every point the tree index the training of the tree which you can see so if you have not seen my video on uh, decision tree or random forest i would highly recommend you to go and actually see that so that you are able to understand this particular uh, algorithm so let's evaluate the model and we have got 98 percent accuracy that's pretty good uh, that is also the reason that we actually use the smaller data set to get a good accuracy so that actually i can show you the result and uh, now we would prepare this model for tensorflow serving 
so if you don't know about tensorflow serving it is a very uh, means good method i would say if you want to actually uh, use your model for uh, means in the future version for productivity work if you have seen my uh, actually uh, videos on tensorflow production part you can see, know you know that serving makes it really easy to deploy the new algorithms and do experiments on your model so i would just save it uh, yeah so yeah the model has been saved now once it has been saved i would just plot the model and let's see how does it look so it looks something like this you can see the bill length the flipper length the island and everything you can see everything the result which are getting the number of example which are present in that and actually what is happening in this so this particular uh, library the mo plot model in collab library it uh, because of the difference in the way the trees have been trained there are some models that are interesting to plan than others so in this particular uh, library we are able to visualize the whole random forest which has been served here in the in, in, and it is less informative than plotting a cart or the first tree of a gradient boosted tree so we would be plotting the first three trees suppose you want to look at more trees i would just do five here and just run this and you can see it goes till here now the reason is tree index zero suppose i remove this now guess what would happen and as you can see yeah it is showing us this now i would go and do it to one now also yeah you can see it is showing us this uh, the bill length it is also showing us it because this is the particular feature now if i i, I go to tree index 2 it would be showing some different results yeah you can see from the flipper length it is showing me everything so yeah it works like that also you can actually play with this and actually visualize how the whole tensorflow model work and how random forest is working so the root node on the left contains the first condition number of examples and the label distribution and examples that evaluate to build uh, build depth so the model structure and the feature importance so let's look at the model summary to actually realize that how things are working before uh, looking at model summary let's look at some important uh, things that what actually model summary would give us it would tell us the type of algorithm uh, the problem which is solved by the algorithm the features we took the variable importance and the out of the bag evaluation and the number of trees and other metrics so you see here 300 trees uh, the number of trees are 300 and the accuracy we got are is 97.8 and the log loss was uh, actually i would say 6.9 percent almost 7 percent and now look at the feature number of features let's look at that in may uh, the input features so it took the following features and now we would be looking at the model inspector and uh, the feature importance are is as following you can see the feature importance the num root the num nodes the body mass the importance of that particular feature how much is what it was that now uh, the content of the summary and the inspect depends on the learning algorithm for this we had tensorflow random forest and its hyperparameters will trigger the computational uh, of the uh, out of bag variable importance for random forest learner suppose if we have used some different model like if we have used gradient boost trees thing would have definitely been different so now let's look at model self evaluation so while we were training the tensorflow decision forest we can actually self evaluate even if there is no validation per data particularly present for uh, to the fit method so for that what we would do we would do model dot make inspector and do evaluation yeah so this it is not computed on the training data set and can be used as a low quality evaluation so you can see in the it is actually uh, uh, done on the training data set itself and not computed in on the train uh, training data set but as a low quality evaluation the number of example the accuracy you can see so let's plot the training logs so i would just plot it here and yeah as you can see these are the training logs that we have got and we would be plotting the matplotlib uh, library through which we would be plotting the number of trees and the uh, out of the bag accuracy so for that we are doing evaluation accuracy and the uh, and the part for training and testing data so yeah you can see here the number of trees and the accuracy out of bag the log loss function and the number of trees so this is a very good way of representing and visualizing everything so let's run this tensor board and run this we would be actually visualizing through the tensor board and 
actually oh the tensor flow uh, board was actually actually already existing because i just ran the model so it would be showing me the model which was actually already present i would just turn off the dark mode turn off the dark mode oh, actually, actually off so you can see actually from here you can visualize that uh, what this particular data shows you the accuracy and everything and uh, yeah so this is a very uh, good way of actually learning through it and if you want you can actually look at relative wall the smoothing of the curve so it has got a lot of features and you can just see the final accuracy and final loss which is present here now we will retrain the model with a different learning algorithm so let's look at the number of uh, algorithms tensorflow decision forest library gives you so it is random forest gradient boosted trees cart model distributed gradient boosted trees model okay so yeah we will go with this so the description of the learning alg algorithms can all is also available at the api reference so it's uh, it's for you if you want to just look at them you can go and just look for them for each model th there is a return function present so we would be using a subset of features now we would be using build length and island island as the subset feature subset feature and the all features we have done now in the model 2 what we are doing uh, tf keras gradient boost trees features are this exclude the non specified features this is true and it's it's uh, the the uh, word is itself explaining itself so this is the result we are getting now the accuracy is 95 percent and log loss is almost zero because the training data is obviously very uh, low so that now we would be looking at the now we would be doing uh, applying some features here now suppose actually from here you suppose you wanted to test it you wanted to visualize it so what would you do you would directly go here and uh, the feature which i used here particularly if you if you have seen here yeah, the plot model library i would very strongly recommend you after you test your things go to go go with this library and uh, yeah just paste it here so what would this do this is basically going to tell me that how uh, my actually whole thing is working out i would just run this and yeah you can just look at this how the number of everything that it, it is showing me the will and the value the island it took everything it is showing me similarly if we do model dot summary so it is also going to tell us a lot of things uh, okay model dot summary was not defined so i would just rename it and yeah you can see the number of trees everything that you can see it is a long list but it's definitely uh, a, a, go a good thing if you are doing actually research work so the number of tra uh, trains uh, training obviously by trees uh, is the count 978 which is average and you can see the accuracy which is increasing every time everything the attributes in the node everything is present here similarly this is the third model in which we are defining four three features which is year bill length and the sex and now we are using gradient boosted trees model so i would be again just running this and yeah this is the thing we get now let's look at this model model 3 dot summary it's really simple so i would just run this and yeah this is the thing we get so this is how actually you play with this whole now hyper parameters are parameters that uh, that, that are uh, parameters of the training algorithm that impact the quality of the final model you all already know so the list of the hyper parameter is visible with the question mark uh, uh, collab command so we would be using that now we would be doing the next model the gradient boosted trees model actually we can work on some other model also there are four models present so it's totally your choice whichever model you want to see so from here I would just go above here and uh, we would look at the all the actually things present so for that i would very highly rep uh, recommend you to go here on the tensorflow github uh, part and actually look at how each model is working or you can simply go to tensorflow uh, decision forest uh, documentation website and there look all the parameters which are present inside uh, this particular algorithm so i guess this is how all the things are working out once you have done all these things, the class uh, means the TensorFlow decision forest and everything, uh, you actually have got an idea of how the whole model and the structure of TensorFlow when it comes to tree decision forest library works. So it's really simple what you have to do. Uh, you actually took a, take a data set, train a library, 
means take a library train a model on that library like take that let, let that be gradient boosted trees let that be uh, tensorflow uh, random forest model and work on that visualize it and get the results and then actually look at the parameters and specifications that you can actually uh, uh, put in that particular model and just improve your results so this is one of the best practice if you can consider while practicing decision forest in tensorflow so that is it for the video uh, i know there is plenty of things left in this particular notebook but i would uh, recommend you to go and solve this by yourself because that would be really helpful for you so thank you for watching the video thank you and have a nice day